Going to Penn State, I guess that's the team to root for, and I didn't even look at basketball because at the time, Penn State basketball right. was awful. It's still, By the uh, way, they're still awful. Yeah, they always have been. Their they're women's team was always good, but a lot of, the women's <laughs> team had a, 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 she was a bit of a tough coach. A lot of girls would, tra- I'm calling girls, ladies, women, would transfer out. From them. they always have interesting. A lot of, yeah, they always had like Michelle Martiniak. She tried. There was some good players. They'd get top five recruits, and they would transfer because she was such a. They just couldn't get along with her. But I, I never really watched college basketball because I always watched the NBA. Um, it took the Final Four. I went out with some friends, and I saw the, the the. I think it was the Big East tournament. The end of the Big East tournament. I watched Kemba Walker make that uh-huh. miracle shot. Mm-hmm. Right. You remember that? Well, uh, and, and, and that's when I fell in love. I was like, all right, I'm UConn. Well, it's yeah, interesting it's now. So I, I like, it's. I was ha- right. It was Pittsburgh. Hofstra, right? You know, speaking of UConn. So, Hofstra, so they're the closest Division One school to where we are. Four. They had this. They really tried hard to be a. Uh, they want to be a basketball team. They want to be a basketball powerhouse. So after Jay Wright, so they went and got a guy named Tim Welsh, who had been the Iona coach. Well, one day Tim Welsh was there's this place, the the wine cellar here, but Merchants Concourse, the Garden City Wine Cellar or Wine, whatever it's called. What's it called, Mab? Over there, or is that on the other side? Uh, no, it's, it was, uh, I don't know. It's like the Garden City. It's, I don't. Know, I think it's called Wine. So it's right on that across from Target and the movie theaters. Right there. On the, oh, the I know street. where you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, he was a new coach. He was hired for my owner. We were a success, uh, successful coach, and for whatever. And he was staying at a hotel. He was being put up at a. I don't know if it was Garden City Hotel. He didn't have a house yet, so he said, "Well, he got drunk." And he, instead of calling a cab or whatever, he drove. And he got lost because he went the wrong way. Instead of going to Garden City, he wound up in Levittown by Tri-County Flea Market, you know, where he got pulled over, oh. ar- arrested for oh, Dewey, yeah. and uh, lost his job. Oh, my God. So they had to find a guy to replace him. So they found some guy who had been a UMass assistant or something named Mo Cazera. So they hire him, he, and they pay him crazy because he was going to be the assistant to Welsh, to be Welsh. And they give him crazy money because they're like, oh, we need a coach, whatever. Well, Mo Cazera was a terrible coach because he had never been a and a coach anywhere, and he had gone to some small school up in uh, New York where a lot of hockey players go to, but uh, wasn't a basketball school. Well, the best thing he ever did was he married Elisa Di Stefano from News 12. Have you ever met, if you ever watched News 12, I have. he married, and they have, they have a restaurant in Point Lookout called Mo and Elisa, like Mona Lisa. It's called Mo no. and Elisa. But uh, <laughs> so he's an ESPN broadcaster. In fact, he teaches, they teach a class together here at NASA Community College, the continuing education program, like on how to do broadcasting and the like. So he got that job, but then they got rid of him and he was gone. So so then they go and get this guy, Joe Mahalish, who had been the coach at Niagara, which is a uh, MAC school, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, MAC school. They hire him. At the same time, they wanted to get, they wanted to be a basketball school. So they, the, 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 the athletic director of UConn, when Calhoun was there, was a guy named Jeff Hathaway. But if you saw what happened during UConn, you saw there were some problems after Calhoun left, some, you know, some things going on, and, and then the football program, Skip Holtz and the like, they, they built a huge football stadium, they put a lot of money into football, but it just didn't work out, it hasn't been working out, whatever it was. So Hathaway, they tell him, you've got, you can't stay here, but you've got to go, basically kind of thing. Yeah. So Hathaway winds up at Hofstra as the athletic director. So they got Hathaway's the AD, and Hofstra thinks he's going to be a basketball school. It doesn't become a bas- basketball school. So Hathaway has to retire. This year he's, again, told by Hofstra, yeah, you're, you're, or he decides he's retiring. So now, this past week, Hofstra announced their latest, their newest AD. It's a guy who's from, who's from, um, his kid goes to connect with He's from Oakdale. So he still is at Oakdale, but yet he's been the athletic director at Iona College. So he's been going from Oakdale to New Rochelle every day. He's got, he's got three kids. His one daughter is a <coughs> volleyball player. She's going to go play volleyball. She's a connect, connect quad high senior. She's going to go play volleyball at Duke. So he's still staying in Oakdale. But now he's got the job in Hofstra. So it's for Oakdale to Hofstra. Easy job, easy drive, whatever it is. But he's a Mac guy. So now... You've got Mahalich, who came from the MAC in the basketball. You got this AD who came from the MAC. So now Hofstra is looking at maybe we shouldn't be in the Colonial Athletic Association, which is if you know where that comes down, it goes down from like is it BU or Northeastern in Boston all the way down to to uh, College of Charleston down the down the whole coast. It's a lot of the James Madison, William and Mary, a lot of the Virginia schools are there. North Carolina, Wilmington, I think, and and two UNC schools and and the like. So. That that'll be good for some sports at Hofstra, but not for a lot. Of, like my neighbor directly across the street, he's the Hofstra women's soccer coach. Women's soccer in the MAC isn't really a big thing, but in the CAA it is because that's Maryland and Virginia. Women's soccer is huge down there. Not so much here. You know, you're in Siena and Iona. Great, okay, terrific. St. Peter's, yeah, not so much. So. 
we're going to have to watch to see what they do with Hofstra with regards to their what division they because it's all about it. And, and same, it started with Penn State. This is a long way to bring it to Penn, Penn State. When Penn State moved to the Big Ten, yep. Everything changed in, in college sports. Every, all of a sudden, when Pennsylvania became part of the Midwest, everything changed. You know, and Syracuse is now part of the athletic uh, you know, ACC. Everything has changed, and it all stemmed from that Penn State thing. You know, the, the creation of the Big East in the late seventies sort of did this as well. But it's all about the machinations of conferences. So now Hofstra's got to decide: Are we going to play with the big boys? What are we going to do? And now they have this new athletic director. So we'll, we'll see how that goes because they have the ability to recruit locally and have a nice basketball team. They just don't do it. I mean, they had Speedy Claxton, who was I don't know, who's now an assistant coach for them. So at least they're doing what St. John's did and what Georgetown did, bringing back the best player they ever produced and having him be a coach. But, you know, Hofstra is, is not a destination spot for basketball players. It's, it's just not. So what are they going to do? They, and and they, the thing that they used to do, they the Jets used to train at Hofstra. Yeah, and they, for years they, and years. They and years. paid the Jets, I and mean, I th- they paid Hofstra. I think Hofstra made like some to upwards of like $30 million <laughs> with them being there. Then the Jets decided to move to Florham Park, New Jersey. As such, Hofstra has no money to support their, ba- their football program. Yep. And that was a big thing. It, it cost the president of Hofstra his, his job because he became so hated after that. And there's money. Every single Hofstra football alumnus stopped donating money, which was a huge thing to stop to lose uh, money. Of Hoff- and we're not talking the Wayne Corbett's and the Marcus Colston's. You're talking about the guy who played there and then got a good job later on. And, you know, as an alumnus, said, oh, I'm, I am what I am because of Hofstra football. Stop donating. You know, was so mad, was so miffed. And then they go and take that, uh, where the, the Weeb Eubank Hall, and make it a med school. Yeah. And now it's a no grades med school. They haven't graduated their first class yet, but a no grade. So any graduate of Hofstra Medical School will not have been graded. Just so you know, when you see a diploma, what does that even mean? It means it means pass fail, which is kind of funny because isn't life really pass fail? Yeah, <laughs> call you're on the cutting edge, exactly. <laughs> call, call cutting <laughs> or it? not? I don't know. Should we cut? I don't know. <laughs> I was never taught that. <laughs> call you on sports talk. It's, 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 I, I just caught the last part of that, so it's just. You know, like, I guess if you're the Undertaker's Man of the Year, I think we know we're not going. With him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lou Holtz has a famous quote. Uh, he said that uh, there's a Lou Holtz quote and there's a George Carlin quote about. Doctors. Lou Holtz quote is, uh, you know, you know what they call the, f- uh, the f- person who graduates first in their class at med school? Mm-hmm. Doctor. You know what they call the person who graduates last in their class at med school? Doctor. Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George Carlin always had the joke that he said that, you know, just as everyone has the worst person in their occupation, somewhere there's a there's the worst doctor in the world, and someone's got a 9 a.m. visit with him tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that's kind of <laughs> how it goes. And bring that, bring that into the dental world. Yeah, exactly. This is new, and I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, Nick, I, I'll tell you with this. Uh, Chris, remember the guy, uh, Connor, that I brought on twice to the show? Uh, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was, yeah. was like two years he ago? Actually, he actually has a group, uh, Crash the Calm, C A O M. Oh, I know them. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah, they were, they, they were at the Knitting Factory uh, last Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a luck of Manor Haven, that bum. He left early. But yeah, the, yeah Connor, uh, he, I, I followed him ascending through the. Um, you know, through the ranks, so to say. So, used to pitch for MacArthur also. How about that? Yeah, well, how's, that how's that been doing? I, I, I mean, I know they just played Knitting Factor, so they're obviously doing all right. But uh, I mean, they, they do anything uh, big le- lately? Any big tours or anything like that? I, you know, I, I tell you, I work with the guy and I talk to him all the time, and he's a little bit guarded because he doesn't want the uh, other knuckleheads that I work with. Uh, because you know, if he needs a day or well, whatever, it's it's unimportant. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, he, uh, in fact, Chris, what you'll appreciate is that he has the number one song for them is Irish Farewell. Which, Irish uh, farewell. When, when you're Irish and you go to a party, you don't kiss everybody when you leave. You just leave. You just you just bail. It's uh, the Irish goodbye. That's right. Yeah, that's you know, and like I said, you know, <laughs> you know all, all, all of a sudden you see him and then you see him doing stuff like that. So, uh. <laughs> uh, what else is new? Well, I'd like a uh, picture of the Mets fans in the studio. I want to get a month-by-month picture. <laughs> That's you, T-Sizzle? No, listen, As that listen, big you, smile keeps going it's, down. It's go, no, no, it won't. It won't. Listen, I'm not saying... I'm saying par and no injury. So, 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 par and no injury... The Mets is a playoff team. The Mets is a, a playoff team that can that can go far. You know, like I was telling them before, this is a, <laughs> this is a surprise to a few people. I, you know, people that I guess that's probably not Mets fans, but 
I think we forgot over the last couple of years of how good, you know, the Mets pitching is. And <sighs> now it's at a point where we're just asking these guys, Syndergaard and DeGrom and Harvey, to only pitch six innings now. And then we could take care of the rest. Give us a solid six innings. If that's the case, if, if Confoto come back, um, came back, if that's the case, <clears throat> listen, man, we, we're here. We're here to stay. We're here to stay. So. L- listen, all right. I hate to be the guy to dump a big bucket of ice cold but, water on this. I, I know how many. I know we only played six games. This is I know. Also the speech that uh, General Custa gave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I know it looks bad. No, but the, re- the reserves are coming. The reserves, are, yeah, but we're we're going to be out just fine. But I, I got to ask you a question. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them to you quick. Mm-hmm. Tell me if this guy inspires confidence in you in your lineup. Mm-hmm. Cespedes, yes or no? Yes. Conforto, yes. Bruce, yes. I, I give him a maybe. Honestly, I give. Oh, no. I, I, I buy into Bruce because of what he did with the Indians. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brian, and he had thirty something. Yeah, yeah. And what Bruce. he did with this is a guy, <clears throat> Jay Bruce has no business playing in New York. We we thought. Then all Shit. of a sudden he came. That after you know, we saw that really was an aberration. It was just the guy got traded mid year from the only organization he knew, the Reds, and he had to be over. Okay, your kids are in school. Come here. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. like oh what? Huh? Who? But keep going down the line. I mean, oh. Frazier. Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Todd Frazier's nice. He's a well, nice piece. Yeah, no I fear, mean, like he'll 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 hit but, twenty but, to thirty home runs. Yeah, but he'll yeah, just that's strike out. He's going to strike out. He's going to bat two twenty. Yeah. This is what I'm yeah. saying. But this is what I'm saying. You, where, you're not going to have the same confidence you have in Cespedes and Crawford. Yeah, three hitters. I'm not, good. Oh, whoa, 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 if you have three whoa, whoa, whoa. consistent hitters, you guys got who? You got Stanton. You got Judge. And you guys got um, Sanchez. Sanchez. Okay. They got Brett Gardner. Don't sleep on Didi. Don't sleep on Didi. Do not sleep on Didi. Listen, I'm not like I said. Don't sleep on Didi. Listen, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I look. Roma I believe Flores. in Cespedes. I Conforto. I, I need to see him stay healthy. A and B. I'd like. To, I just want to see him a full year. Bruce, I like, but I, I don't know. Maybe I, I could see him having a bad year. I know it's going well so far, but Todd Frazier, exactly what we said. Lots of home runs. Lots I believe of in Cabrera. We have no idea what Rosario is. We have no idea what this kid is. But don't, what, but what, don't, was, what, don't, what did Rosario do in the? I mean, he was the like the number, he was the number one. Number one, one what did he do? I don't know what he did. Was uh, it his glove? It was his glove you know, and his offense. His offense. Yeah. He's, I, I don't remember he's a contact second. hitter. He, he was a hot. He was a uh, stolen, bases. stolen bases. He did everything. He did everything. He's, 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 he was he's like spo- a Draymond Green. Right. Okay. He did everything. Exactly. Yeah. He, was, why, he does why everything. Why did Reyes start over him today? Because well, I don't, I don't, he's, I got think naked, he's got him. naked pictures of the Wilpons. I mean, Reyes <laughs> is just is beyond the beyond. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't laugh at that because honestly, that's my favorite met of all time. But 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 it's true though. It's true though. It's true though. It's true. Every organization other than the Mets where he's ever been has lost because of him, and the minute he left, boom, straight to the top. Yeah. I mean, not they didn't win it, but the Rockies, the Marlins, the Blue Jays, all he just made them lose, and then the minute he left, boom, it was it was just different. Now, just to finish this, Cabrera yes. and Gonzalez. I like Cabrera. I like Cabrera. I like Cabrera. Yeah. I love Cabrera. Yeah. Yeah. Gonzalez, what, no. who knows? We don't, don't. need too much the, from the, him. The we answer, need the glove. The answer with Gonzalez is who knows? And they're only giving them one month tryout, essentially. Yeah. So of all these guys, tryout. you're looking at. Look, this is a lineup that is that is literally littered. It's, it's a redundancy there uh, with a, a, a whole lot of question marks. But, I'm not saying huge question marks. They're all little but question don't marks. Don't compare a National League lineup to an American League. I'm not comparing them. Like, no, like, no. And you need three hitters in the, in the National League versus four in the Americans. Kind of equal because yeah. they're DH. Yeah, but how many teams? Okay, can you say consistently through their whole batting order that you're confident in the in the NL? You know, you got the Cardinals. I mean, not the Cardinals. Excuse me. You got the the I, Nationals. Who we the we, Nationals? I'm cons- uh, consistently down consistently the line. Consistently down the line, right? I would say the Nationals. The, I would say the. Uh, I would say probably the Dodgers. Not the Dodgers no more. Not the Dodgers not anymore. The, no. Uh, uh, I would say probably. I, I I would lean towards the. Uh, I can't. That's say what I'm them. saying. It's really just the Nationals in the NL. What yeah. the consistent I mean, throughout the whole batting order? Who who catches for the Dodgers? I'm just trying to think of um, uh, Grandal. Grandal. Yeah, Grandal. Yeah, Grandal. Yeah, Grandal. Grandal. And the, he's okay. Maybe Rockies. Yeah. Maybe. yeah, actually, you know what? The Rockies. Maybe they just, the Rockies. Uh, by the way, they just Arnado, re uh, yeah. re-upped the, the Charles Blackman. Uh, Blackman. Arenado. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But what they gotta maybe they probably have one more than the Mets. They maybe have four that you're confident. Well, they got not, Blackman, not Arenado. Yeah. Who else? Uh, I don't. I don't know their whole lineup. So whoever their first baseman is, because it's going to be a good hitter. I'm sure he's yeah, in Colorado. I mean, I understand one thing, and I brought it up before with the Mets. 
I mean, they get a couple of injuries. They're gonna have. They're gonna be trying See, out Tarkovsky and Volk out there in right field. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm mentioning that tomorrow. By the way, that is hysterical. But no, but but, but this is the thing. We're all saying part injuries. Part. Uh, God forbid, you know, because I don't wish injury on no team. God forbid something had to judge or stance it. It's the same thing. They go from championship to maybe not make, maybe not make the playoffs. Maybe make the playoffs, but maybe not. They go right to the bubble. That's the difference so, with this team, though. We, we just, I, I wasn't comparing Yankees to Mets. Let's not compare Mets to uh, Mets to Yankees. We could lose a couple of, we could lose a couple of these guys and do.